This is Naked Pine. Naked Pine. M I P. With Masamela Matsuma. Mark Thompson. Naked Pine. Get woke. Ladies and gentlemen, I know all of you know that Eric and I are two cool dudes, but what makes us even cooler is that we're both Sagittarius's with December birthdays. So, uh, hope you all appreciate that. I know we do. Fearless media commentary is always from Eric Bollard, and he's winning friends and followers every day. If you're not one already, why don't you become one? Press run that media. Eric, how are you today, buddy? Good, good. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. So uh, there's not as much reporting as there was before the Virginia election about critical race theory, is there? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I just put a piece up. This was a manufactured controversy Republicans put together. Critical race theory is not taught in public schools, although it would be fine if it was. Uh, it's mostly a college discipline, looking at the institutional role that racism has played in, in our history, in our government, in all kinds of institutions. So, you know, uh, the, the Republicans invented this claim. Uh, they used it in Virginia. Uh, and the press just absolutely ate it up all year, um, marveling at uh, what an amazing job Republicans had done in terms of creating this controversy. Almost never, or certainly not in the first half of any of the reports, noting that it's not taught in, in, in American schools. I mean, this would be if this would be like if far left groups launched a campaign that you know students were being taught that the moon was made of cheese, right? And, and the press just covered it straight, uh, and and you know got quotes about the controversy and never pointed out. Oh, by the way, the moon isn't made of cheese. I mean, it was to me it was just remarkable, and so. Um, you know, it was all based on Virginia. Uh, you know, the press was adamant that critical race theory cost, you know, Democrats that, that seat in, in in Virginia, the governor's race. So I went and looked at and what's the coverage been since November? And the and the answer is there has been no coverage. Uh, the press has no interest in this topic other than that it relates to being a headache and, and being a problem for Democrats. Give you a couple examples. You know, CNN this year. Uh, they did 183 segments where critical race theory was mentioned two or more times between January and November. They haven't done one since in no, they haven't done one <laughs> in December. Uh, uh, ABC did 31 report critical race theory reports zero uh, in December. Politico did 40 49 and one. You know, Los Angeles Times 40 and zero. Uh, uh, the, it's just Republicans turned off the switch. And the, the press decided, oh, we don't care either, even though we just spent a year. Um, and as I point out, it's actually very telling. The right wing media is, is actually it's been even more pronounced. Fox News did 430 segments on critical race theory between January and November. And I think they've done three in December. So it's all choreographed. It's all manufactured. It's all a charade. And it's a perfect example I think of how Republicans are able to dictate our public discourse uh, and how every news cycle is built on a very simple premise of what are Republicans angry about today. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I, the reason I did it, you know, I think it's, it's important to, for people to understand, you know, just how dominant Republicans are in terms of setting the narrative and of setting the news cycle. And yes, I understand Democrats get hit for bad messaging and why aren't they better communicators? But the built-in advantage that Republicans have is, is really phenomenal. The local uh, television um, modus operandi has always been local television news. If it bleeds, it leaves. I guess in this yeah. case for the Beltway media, um, if, if Republicans are angry about it, as you said, that's yep. the lead. And that's what's pushed. Kind of like the Tea Party is. Remember how the Tea Party mm -hmm. was the thing? And then it after the election, it, it disappeared. Uh, yeah. You haven't you never heard anything else about the Tea Party. Yeah. It, and, it, and another it, classic, uh, a couple other classic examples were the caravans, the border caravans that were storming our borders uh, in midterm 2018 yeah. midterms. That yeah. if you go back and read the press coverage, they they a lot of people thought that was going to save Republicans in the midterms. This was a brilliant strategy 
Of course, Republicans ended up losing 40 seats in the House. Uh, and Benghazi, Benghazi was a classic example of a year long, uh, you know, kind of charade. Uh, Republicans were, were able to invent a controversy that didn't exist. And the Beltway Press absolutely played along the whole time. I point out my piece, what's different here is that, you know, Benghazi actually happened, right? There was an attack on the US consulate, four people died. That's all factual. Critical race theory, it, it doesn't even exist. It, it's not being taught. Uh, it's not in any public schools. Uh, so for me, that was just an astonishing failure all year uh, of the press um, to gin up this controversy. And now, insult to injury, they just unplug the coverage when Republicans say, OK, we're done. We won our governor's race. Oh, come, you know, and come circle back in 10 months. Let's do this again starting next August. Uh, and we'll, we'll all we'll have another spasm of critical race theory when when there's an election cycle. It's also you know, choreographed and, and the press is just happy to play its role. Maybe we need a course on critical media theory. Yeah. Uh, to get back to basics and require everybody in the Beltway media to, to take it because critical media theory, I think, course, the first page of that book would probably be to report factual information uh, yeah. things, to report on things that really exist. Yeah. Uh, that's that's nonpartisan. That's that's really what media is supposed to be doing uh, on the fourth estate. But but <laughs> we'll see. That's that's interesting. I guess the only other thing that concerns me, though, you're right. They may resurrect it come August. Uh, but if they don't, um, I don't know that I don't know whether or not it's less comforting not yeah. to be able to anticipate what it'll be because it's going to be something. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Right. Something else. And they invest a lot of energy, Fox News, as a matter of fact, in the critical race theory and the whole right wing. So what will it be? What will they manufacture? And will, and so folks, that's why what Eric's doing is important. Hopefully, Lord have mercy, someone is reading what he's saying in these Beltway Media uh, editorial boardrooms. Mm -hmm. um, because they, they need a mirror. You all are literally taking your cues from one political party when you shouldn't be taking your cues from either really um and i hope someone but but that's the other thing too the, the culture that sometimes eric rather than than be self-critical in that way yeah and, and reflect on what you're saying some of these folks in the beltway media get even more defensive they, when, they, double, they double down when the criticism comes from the left absolutely absolutely we saw that a week ago when um, um you know dana milbank at the washington post had a very good article uh, detailing, um, you know, he had some pretty good data how Biden is getting worse coverage, more negative coverage than Trump uh, in 2020. This was after Trump had been impeached. This was after Trump told people to inject bleach into their veins. Somehow the center, this traditional center left Democratic president is getting worse coverage uh, instead. And, you know, instead of there being some actual, you know, self-reflection, it was particularly over at Politico. There was just kind of the spasm of, of defensiveness. Oh, you don't really understand how it works. Oh, you know, liberals don't understand the media. Oh, you just want everyone to get, you know, why would you, you know, liberals just want Biden to be not accountable, right? Oh, he, he only gets, you know, he should only get positive coverage. Nobody's saying, literally nobody is saying that. Nobody on the left, nobody even who works at the White House thinks Biden, you know, is above criticism. What we're saying is uh, fairness. And, and, you know, and, and, you know, this the hysterical inflation coverage, you know, pretending, you know, inflation equals the entire economy. You know, if we're not going to look at the GDP and unemployment and spend and consumer spending and all that thing. So, uh, yeah, it's very defensive when it comes from when it comes from the left uh, and kind of an over eagerness to placate folks you know, um, when the criticism comes from comes from the right, because, look, you know, not trying to prove you're not part of the liberal media bias is the other daily, you know, conscious or subconscious, you know, goal of a lot of these people in terms of, you know, what are Republicans angry about and how do we prove we're not soft on Democrats? More MIP after this message. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save money on your insurance? 
Of course you would. After all, who wouldn't love a great deal, right? And when it comes to great rates on insurance for all of the things in your life, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners, condo, or renters coverage. You could save even more with a special discount when you bundle your coverages. Plus, add the easy-to-use GEICO mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. And choosing to switch to GEICO becomes an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save with great rates and discounts. It's easy. Simply go to geico.com to get a rate quote or contact your local agent and get started seeing how much you could save. Well, now we've gone from a critical race theory to critical media theory. Let me now go to some do some critical conspiracy theory, if you don't mind. Because you just brought something up to me. We look at it made me think about something. Um, as much as we have seen Republicans stack the courts with judges, yeah, I wonder if there's been sort of a stealth operation to stack many and media newsrooms who really are conservative, who who really are doing some specific bidding. Because you're right, the, the pushback against what Milbank wrote. And, and he again, he presented some facts. He didn't present, yeah, yeah. you know, just, oh, this is what I think. or this is the vibe. You and I have talked about what we have seen right, right. Uh, subjectively. He has he had data and mm-hmm. folks still lost their mind. So I'm beginning to wonder. I know there is part of the culture is trying to uh, uh, present or pretend that the media is not liberal. But it, it seems as if people have gone. May, some may have even gone all the way to the dark side because it it, it the, the constant. I, yeah. I know you've written about the the lack of reporting on the uh, uh, the economy in a fair way to Biden, um, where you know things are not as bad as has been reported. But it's as if we got to play to the algorithm. The algorithm likes yeah. negativity, so we're going to play to the algorithm. Well, there's a very interesting piece in the Wall Street Journal today about um, a presentation that was given at the Washington Post. The new editor just came in um, and just looking at how badly traffic is down, you know, and not just at the Washington Post versus Trump. Uh, They are absolutely suffering a a Trump slump, the media. And they're, they're, you know, that was an artificial high. So if I was in a leader's if I were in a leadership position for a newsroom, I would say, well, that that didn't represent reality. We were never going to have the kind of traffic that Trump created. But that's not the mentality. The mentality is how do we get back? How do we get back? If, if we're going back to the Obama coverage in terms of traffic and stuff, that's that's a failure. How, how do we keep, how do we get back to the Trump years? Um, and it's kind of as you suggested, you create drama, you you manufacture. Uh, and, and so that's what I think they've been guilty of. CNN in particular has just been so desperate, particularly since August, to create a narrative, to create a storyline. Everything has to fit. Quick example, they had a new poll this week. Biden's approval at 49 percent, unchanged from the summer. You you see you look at the press coverage that Trump has gotten since this summer. And to think is he is sitting at 49 percent unchanged. That's mind boggling. I mean, he has been absolutely under the thumb. So what does CNN do? Well, they put they put that in the seventh paragraph. And the entire story is about how most of the poll is about how people are angry about inflation. So, you know, you have to take such kind of overt steps to kind of stick to your narrative, stick to your storyline. Uh, you know, and, and by the way, you know, four years ago to the to the month, December 2017, Trump was at 35 percent in that poll. <laughs> you know, and, and 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 if you go back and look at the coverage, then now you know the press kind of sure. Well, that's Trump being Trump. You know, yeah, he, he's at thirty five percent. Biden's at forty nine percent, and the sky is falling. So I think I think you you. I don't know if folks have gone over to the dark side ideal ideologically, or or they've gone over to the dark side of so desperate for traffic, so desperate for hits so desperate to create drama and tension. I mean, look at the Kamala Harris coverage. That is completely, 90% of that is just manufactured. No vice president in the history of this country has ever been covered like that. Now we have this ridiculous parlor game about, is Biden going to run? Who's going to be on his ticket? 
Uh, so I think they are hurting right now. I, I think uh, editors and producers and executives are under pressure to jack up that it, it jack up that traffic. You are never going to have reader engagement uh, that, like you had during the Trump years. That was a phenomena in the literal sense. But you know, editors and producers and executives see the falling numbers and they say, "How do we turn this around?" And the, what they're trying to do to turn it around rarely produces good journalism and it rarely informs the public in, in a meaningful way. More MIP after this message. AirPods versus wired headphones. That's that's a scandal. <laughs> yeah, according, exactly. to, according to Politico for the who, who, you're right. What vice president has ever been uh, Nobody. held to Nobody. count on what type of headphones right. are you just 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 desperate. But, you know, yeah. again, it, it, you know, you know, oftentimes you and I take a philosophical bent. See, if you, you have a meeting like that and there's this slump. You're right. The analysis ought to be that what drove whatever traffic, good traffic media got last year was an anomaly. And it was wrong. Yeah. yeah. And and he, I'll give you another analogy. What is rubbernecking? Rubbernecking is this this natural yeah. human impulse to slow down and look at the accident, look at the fender bender. And that, that's not always a, a positive impulse, but that's just human sure, nature. Sure. Human nature. You know, but, but we do it and 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 we should, you know, and and <laughs> we should be concerned. Right. But this is the same thing. So we're going to create a, an accident. We, mm. We're going to we're going to find something sensational that actually may be a, a, a harmful thing Mundane, and a tragic yeah. thing. But that's what's yeah. going to get everybody um, uh, to look at it. And, and once again, that is just the the power of social media. I, I hope that um uh takes a turn one day i it, i think i think it's kind of like um uh, the shift in baseball i mean yeah, right. it, but you can't wait for it to go away again i, I mean right, maybe right. Media will, will, will make sense out of itself um your how would you evaluate the media's the mainstream of the bellway media's coverage of especially in the past few days, January 6th commission, these text yeah. messages that have come out, have they, have you seen any significant and meaningful and proportional coverage of that? Well, there, I think there's good news and bad news. I think there's the good news is um, a fact. I think the fact that Liz Cheney has an R in front of her name uh, and she's kind of the point person right now. Uh, the press is way more interested. If, if Adam Schiff had told the exact same story this week, uh, it would not have gotten the attention and I think the pretty strong coverage. Uh, and it just goes back to you know the built-in bias we talked about. And and I think it is and and it, and it gen genuinely is more interesting if there's a Republican you know calling out Republicans. You know I think the I think these January six hearings are going to be a bigger deal than than most in the media thought. I, there was very little buildup to the first one, uh, and and Liz Cheney and the committee dropped some pretty good bombs. You know, the, all the all the coverage has been about these handful of aides that won't cooperate. They're going to go to court. Who's going to be in contempt? Ninety ninety nine, you know, ninety ninety five percent of folks are cooperating. They have a ton of information. I think we're sitting on the iceberg. You know, and again, I I, I think there's going to be more damage done. On the flip side. You know, we saw that Mark Meadows was sitting on this PowerPoint presentation that was circulating within right wing circles, a 38 page, you know, I called it a rocket ship into the big lie abyss. You know, every, you know, China, China controls our voting machines. Uh, let's delay the election. Let's send out the National Guard. Um, you know, we had the chief of staff, you know, it was either receiving or circulating. He, he met with the author of this unhinged document. Uh, and to this day, that that story has not appeared on the front page of a single major newspaper in this country. So I think there's good news and bad news. They're still kind of slow walking this thing. I don't think anyone, anyone 12 months ago thought we were still going to be uncovering these blockbuster revelations about just how massive this coup attempt was. Uh, and, and here we are. But I, I, I do feel like there's a frog in boiling water situation where, 
uh, a lot of this is still being normalized. And my God, if Barack Obama's chief of staff had a document about how he could keep him in office permanently, uh, not only would the New York Times put it on the front page, they'd call for his impeachment the next day. So they're, they're still normalizing. Uh, and and the but there's also good coverage, but there, there there's also it, this stuff is just pouring out. You know, there's just a torrent of revelations. These people weren't very smart. They didn't they don't even really try to cover it up. You know, I've said this week, I don't think Trump cares about any of these revelations. He doesn't care. He's 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 honest about the whole thing. He wants to overthrow election results. He wants to destroy free and fair elections. I don't think he's squirming down Mar-a-Lago. I don't think he cares what comes out because he's 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 pretty straightforward. I think some people in the press are really being as straightforward and, and they won't come out and say the next Dem next Republican nominee in this country wants to overturn elections and, you know, and wants to destroy democracy. So there's, there's, there's this weird disconnect. Trump is being very honest about what he wants to do. And the press is still kind of dancing around it because they don't want to admit that authoritarian, uh, a proud authoritarian, anti-democratic, a uh, small D authoritarian might be the, you know, might be the Republican party's next nominee. Yeah. And, and I mean, that, that's, that's serious coverage. I mean, to talking about what was happening with Meadows and all that, I mean, that those want to talk about AirPods. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's gotta be, that's gotta be a, a, a bigger story. Um, and, and then uh, in the text messages, we saw oh, that yeah. i mean that was amazing um because the very same you have fox hosts texting meadows to do something right and and then they're still on television defending the thing you know uh uh, uh standing up for it you know what right. i i gotta do this uh, um uh, i'm gonna air, give share a clip folks for for everyone's benefit to hear where what the and this is courtesy of the recount. They actually did a a a brief mashup of Liz Cheney reading the text of Fox hosts, followed by mm. what the Fox hosts actually said on it. I'm just going to just a couple seconds, y'all. I want y'all to you all uh, 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 to hear this. Uh, uh, Eric, let me know. Can you hear this? Please get him yes. on TV, destroying everything you have accomplished. Ryan Kilmeade texted. I do not know Trump supporters that have ever demonstrated violence that I know of in a big situation. Quote, Mark, the president needs to tell people in the Capitol to go home. This is hurting all of us. He is destroying his legacy, Laura Ingram. An overwhelming majority of them, 99 point, more than 99% had to be, uh, were peaceful. Quote, can he make a statement Ask people to leave the Capitol, Sean Hannity urged. And we had the reports that groups like Antifa, uh, other radical groups, I don't know the names of all of them, that they were there to cause trouble. Uh, can you believe that? <laughs> They're texting metal because they know it's wrong. But then they yeah. get on TV and say something else. Oh, yeah. I, look, you know, the, the problem with calling out Fox News hypocrisy is, is they don't care, kind of like Trump. You know, they're so shameless. I think they're embarrassed. I don't think they like being on the defensive as they were all week. And all those hosts went on TV and pretended like they didn't do anything wrong. And they made fun of Liz Cheney. Ha ha ha. Uh, but it's obvious, you know, it, it, you know it, they just lie to their viewers every single day. And it gets a little uncomfortable. And as I pointed out earlier this week, you know, we rarely get an unfiltered view into Fox News. Right. It is a closed society. Uh, there's no leaks. We don't, you know, we don't know what those editorial meetings are like. So this offered us a very rare opportunity and surprise, you know, surprise. Guess what? You know, these handful of texts we've ever seen from Fox News personalities confirm everything we've always thought about these Fox News personalities. Uh, and, you know, they were frantic. They were desperate. They were watching this in real time. They knew it was a disaster. They knew it was a problem, a disaster for the country, for Trump. And if you watch him today, you know, the insurrection was a bunch of grandparents walking around with signs. So it, the, the gaslighting and the hypocrisy is just off the charts, off the charts. And it's their own words. 
and it's a Republican reading those words into the public record. So it, it was a debacle. As I, as I said this week, as I said, you know, Chris Wallace picked the right week to quit Fox News. <laughs> and what does that mean? What What is the significance of 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 Chris Wallace stepping stepping down? I, I guess it, on the surface, it yeah whatever veneer of real journalism or respectability it once had is gone. It, first yeah, of all, is that the reason? Did he really give a reason? Did he say that or he just left? No, I, you know, I think CNN's going to get, uh, there's a couple good reasons why he would go to CNN. A, it's streaming, so he doesn't have to worry about ratings. He doesn't have to go over there and say, oh, he's a flop. You know, you know, he, de he doesn't get good ratings. That's easy. They're going to let him do a lot of non-politics stuff. So I think he's going to just, interview people he likes or from different walks of life, arts and okay. politics and business. And I think he's probably worn out of, of the politics thing. But the reason it's such a stinger for CNN or for um, Fox News for a couple reasons, uh, he's going straight to CNN. I don't know. I can't. I've watched, you know, I've been covering Fox News for a very long time. I can't think of a high profile personality who left Fox News and went directly to CNN, their most hated rival. So that to me was a poke in their eye. Uh, and the way he left, uh, he didn't tell anybody. Nobody in the D.C. Bureau knew. At the end of the day, Fox News put out this very perfunctory statement. Uh, Chris Wallace has, is, you know, probably among the top five most famous Fox personalities for the last two decades. Uh, and for him to just say, shut the door, uh, it, it, it was very interesting. That is not how Fox personalities usually exit. Reminded me of the whole Shep Smith thing. Look, there's no room for these people there. Uh, I have no sympathy for Chris Wallace. He, 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 he was part of this nonsense for years. He gave them cover. He cashed Rupert Murdoch's checks. Uh, he slept fine at night knowing that what Fox News was doing to this country. So I don't think he's a hero. I don't think he's someone who should be looked up to. But Fox News loved to point to him when it got accused of being a propaganda network. Oh, you know, we have Chris Wallace. He does presidential debates. See, we have a news division. That news division is getting thinner and thinner. And as I said on Twitter this week, you know, if Fox News has a news division. How come nobody can point to three stories they've broken in the last 10 years? I mean, they don't have a news division. It's a charade. And Wallace was the face of that. And now that's been ripped away. And now, it's you know, it's the Tucker Carlson network, network and everybody knows it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they also used him. Uh, when it came now, most advertisers are gone anyway. But at one point, when it came to advertisers, I bet Chris helped too. Oh, when advertisers were like, yeah, "Well, yeah. we all really doing over here? We got Chris Wallace." Sure. You know, oh, okay, and that and that probably offset a lot of the other foolishness that was right before people's um, very eyes. Um, folks, PressRun.media, uh, check it out. Um, it, uh, people gonna talk about Kamala Harris's AirPods and not talk about the and not write about the bizarre, do a deep dive into the really bizarre behavior of Senator Sinema. Um, hmm. You know, I mean, if we get rid, she's saying we get rid of filibuster, we might lose. Uh, if you don't get rid of the filibuster, you're going mean, to lose. That's definitely going to lose. But let's talk about AirPods. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean if, if that's, if, if you got to focus on something, but, you know, again, they have to create this drama but but that's important she and match what they are literally doing uh to block democracy yeah. cover that folks uh eric happy holidays to you and your family happy birthdays uh december birthday as well buddy <laughs> you too All thanks right. have a great week folks if you haven't already please press run.media please subscribe thanks for getting woke and listening to make it plain please remember to listen like and wherever you get your podcasts, please give the show a five-star rating. And please do spread the word. Let's all continue to pray for each other during this pandemic and this police-demic. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been made plain. Introducing Albert's new Wool Runner 2. Redesigned to redefine comfort. Extra cushioning offers a plush ride, and premium materials deliver a cozy fit. Go to allbirds.com and use code FRESH24 for a free pair of socks with purchase today.